Okay, so we're recording now. Um, hi, my name is Daryl Webster. Thank you everyone for joining us at this uh, session and meeting of the OneNote water cooler. Um, we're going to be looking at the superheroes of OneNote based lessons. And um, we're going here with us, we've got um, Maria and Tamara and Kurt. Um, they are teachers that have um, created some excellent OneNote resources. Um, they put them together in a, a Sway presentation and uh, for a competition they all were recognized as, as um, winners and, and making an effort and, and um, they came up with some great things. So we're going to be talking to them today. Um, just a, a little um, a side experiment you might say um, uh, before we start. Uh, I have shared this notebook that you see in front of you. Um, you can uh, click this link over here, the uh, bit.ly link, and I'll just drop that in the instant message window so it's easy for you to click. And when you click on that link, you will be able to um, join us in the browser. And um, as you can see, Kurt and myself have created a page. So you'll need to hit the uh, edit in, in OneNote online button up here, and then you can create your own page. Now, the idea with today's meeting is that you'll be helping to take some notes. We'll be able to publish these notes, and everyone will be able to benefit from them later when we uh, put them together with the video. So um, it will just uh, also one last thing, um, the Yammer community that we have is uh, yammer.com forward slash one note water cooler um, and that's where uh, a number of us um, have either you know, gathered together to um, ask questions about OneNote and, and um, share our knowledge and help each other out so um, feel free to join us in there too. So thank you Maria, Tamara and Kurt for joining us. Um, what I'm going to do now is um, probably just to, um, we'll, uh, we'll, you're all, each of you are presenters, so Tamara is going to be presenting for us first because she's got to get ready for school and head out soon. So if you feel free Tamara to yeah, dim your video and um, share your screen and we should be able to see that loading shortly. Thank so, you Tamara. Tamara. Uh, that should be soon. Um, we'll have a look here. Sometimes there's a, a little delay as it comes pushing through. Well, whilst, while that's loading, I'll just introduce myself. Um, as Daryl mentioned, my name's Tara Sullivan. I'm the Dean of Learning at Ormiston College and we're located in Brisbane, Australia. Um, our school, we have a prep to year 12 school with approximately 1,500 students. We run a one-to-one -one laptop program in from year 7 to 12, but also have class sets of laptops in year 3, 3 to year 6 and iPads in the early years. OneNote is for us, I guess, is a primary note-taking software and something that really we use uh, by the school. And Daryl, I'll just check, has my OneNote come up? Not yet. What I've done is I've stopped presenting, so you should have a, a little bar along the top saying um, become presenter or something of the like, and then um, click click to share your desktop. I've got on there, um, Brett, feel free to start presenting. Yes. Okay, so now yeah. if you share your desktop from the, uh, the desktop button. Uh, yeah. Okay, and you should have that little yellow uh, that's outline. It. It's coming up now. Excellent. If you could just let me know when it comes up. Sure. So today I'm going to present to you a collaborative task that we um, did with a school down in Sydney, and this was using one night um, online. Tomorrow, so we, we have your desktop yes. now. That's good. We Fantastic. can see it. Fantastic. Excellent. Um, so. We were using OneNote to um, share with another school so that um, each of the students could use their collaborative OneNote on a task. And the way that I did this was simply just by creating OneNote um, and then storing that into my OneDrive and then sharing that link. And that link just went out to them via an email. The students would click on that link and then they would have access to the OneNote. And um, it didn't really matter whether they had OneNote on their computer or not. Um, they could use the OneNote in the desktop application, but if they didn't have the OneNote, it would just open up in their web browser and they could still participate in the class. So the task was based on um, my students creating 
obviously it's tutorials on the seven laws of composition and this came off a task that we just completed on visual literacy when my students were creating photo essays. And I guess what I was really interested in with this particular task was how did students create, um, collaboratively create contact, content and engaging key feedback with an authentic audience. And I really struggled, I guess, with this all year that my students really didn't really, um, I guess, find it interesting to give peer feedback and they found the task quite difficult to do, especially with people that they knew. So we endeavoured to go down this task of actually working with students that they didn't know. So as you can see, what my students did, they created these office mix tutorials and at the end of that, they then um, uploaded their link, which is in here. Oops, sorry. And I'll just put my pen up. They uploaded their link into the shared OneNote and they continue to do that over a series of days. The collaborating class then um, joined our shared OneNote and the task required the students to watch those tutorials and then after watching the tutorials to go out and then create their own images um, based on the content that my students have created. And then they would come in and they would use this table to upload their work. So an example of that looks like um, these are two students down in Sydney. So you can see on the left hand side here, this is where the students came in and uploaded their images. And then they had to provide a caption rule of composition there. So as this work was coming in, my students were also using the OneNote and they were giving feedback um, to the students on their photo essays. So you can see in here, and I just use columns to allocate um, each of my groups a space to be able to um, put in their feedback. What I think is very interesting about this particular task is that it's not restricted by language. So what I've actually done is I've changed um, some of that feedback into French. And so if you had students in um, a school um, overseas and they weren't very proficient with the language, they can easily just do that in their own language and my students can still um, are able to collaborate, I guess, with those students by just using the translate tool. It's very, very easy to do. So I'm just going to highlight this text here and then come up to the review tab and then click on the translate. And then we can translate the selected text. And so this is in French when it comes up. I'm just going to change that so that now it translates into English. And here it is here, and then just hit the insert button. And so as you can see, now it's translated back into English. So really this task is not um, just restricted to um, working with your own language, you could be working with any students across the world. Um, so, the students who were in the collaborating class, they also were giving feedback to my students. And if I come back to the tutorials on the first page there, you can see that we included this particular column in here. And the students went as a class and just gave feedback um, to my students. And that my students also included in the interactive group um, to get that feedback. And so, I think that that is really a fantastic way of being able to engage these students in collaboratively creating this content, but also being able to give um, peer feedback with an authentic audience, and so it was extremely successful. Um, from this, and we did this last year, we decided to um, present this type of task to our students at the school, and they were very, very excited about the possibilities. Um, of what they could do with working with uh, students in a global audience. And so I've just put some examples together of the type of um, activities that we're going to use by using OneNote online to collaborate with other schools. The first activity I wanted to show you was um, whether in the early years. So I guess this is also to demonstrate that this is not necessarily a task for um, just students in the higher years. You can still do this with the younger students. In this particular example, um, the students are going to be exploring the weather. And so what we thought we would do is we would create a OneNote and share that with countries around the world. And each of the countries will have a page and they just simply take this page, rename it with their country and their school. So as a whole class, because they are the youngest students, 
they're going to come in and um, colour the area of where they're located. And so I might just do this down here. And after they've done that, we're going to ask each of the countries um, to keep a weather diary. And simply by just using the video tool to record a statement about weather in their country, um, then using the drawing tool to ind indicate the weather um, on that particular day and to continue to fill out that diary over um, two weeks. I think that's extremely powerful because um, the students in each of the countries will be able to go in and view those weather diaries and it's real data and it's real students um, talking about um, their world. So that's an example in the early years. With our year five and six students, um, I'm working with one of the math teachers and um, he's very much um, into the physics learning um, concept at the moment with his students. So we thought what we would do is we'd set up a collaborative one night and we would um, find a school where we could partner the students. And we would then put these higher order thinking skills up and the students would have to come along and use the pen one to solve the problem, but also then to use audio or video tool to explain the strategy. And I guess because we know that when we're doing problem solving, there are all sorts of strategies that we use. And so it would be a wonderful way of being able to share that um, with students and how they go about um, solving problems. The great thing, obviously, about OneNote is that you have this ability to be able to use that drawing tool. So um, it's, it's perfect in maths. And you can see in this particular case that we changed that paper into grid paper. Another activity that we'll be doing will be in our languages and the languages that we have at Ormiston College is German and um, Japanese. So I was speaking to the German teacher a couple of days ago and we've decided that we're going to try and set up a task of um, a language buddy diary. And so our German students, um, what they will do is that we will find a school, obviously, um, that speak German and are also learning um, English. And the students will um, keep a uh, get this little diary. And um, each day, just a really small task, the students will come in, they'll write their name, and then they complete the written or oral task. So in the first task there, you've got in a 30 second video, they need to introduce themselves to their language buddy. And so then obviously that language buddy will come in, they'll do that video, and they will give the students feedback. Um, on that task. And likewise, um, student learning English will come in and complete exactly the same task, um, but in English, and then our students can do feedback on that task. We've, I guess we've um, put there a few activities to get them started, but then we thought, well, why don't they just come up with their own task? And so what they will do in here, they'll just delete write your own task here and come up with their own task, and then they can, I guess, um, I guess lead that particular activity without us having to say these are the activities that you need to do. And I think that that is just, you know, brilliant for a language student, you know, why not be practising your language skills with somebody, you know, from that particular language, um, rather than just trying to do that with um, kids in your own class or just your teacher. Um, how am I going for time there, Daryl? Um, no, you're doing fine. Uh, if you just share one one more resource or so, and and then we'll um, have a look at what Maria's come up with. I know that some people are experiencing mm -hmm. some some quite bad sound, so um, I is think that we'll have, it, it, yes, it is. But I think it's when you're a little closer to the microphone that's inbuilt to your computer, it, it's quite clear. So um, yep, just okay. just continue, and and then we'll um we'll listen to Maria shortly. Um, and so the last one, this is a um, project that I'm actually undertaking and it's based on um, grammar tutorials and I guess it's very similar to the first activity I was doing. Um, my students are going to come along, they're going to create a grammar tutorial on a allocated topic and we're going to work with a collaborating school, um, again down in Sydney, they will also complete um, grammar tutorials and by the end of that we're going to have a bunch of these tutorials. The students will use the key feedback again and we're hoping to be able to grab that content and then upload that onto a website to share with anyone around you know, in, in the world. 
So um, I guess that gives you a few of the activities and, and how we're using OneNote online. As I mentioned before, we don't need, uh, the Club NFL doesn't need to have um, OneNote installed on their computer and they can use that solely via the, the web app. So I think that when you think about the type of tools and what you can do in OneNote and then think about that you're not restricted by your location, you're not restricted by time and you're not restricted by language, then those activities, you know, it's the possibility of that endless. Um, if anyone is interested in undertaking any of the um, activities I have mentioned, I've just popped up on the screen my contact details. And um, please feel free to get in contact with me because we would love to be able to make some of these connections um, globally to work on some of these projects or any other projects that you might have. Thank you, Tamara. Look, I, I, what I like about your use of OneNote with, with this, these particular activities is that you're leveraging other tools. You're using Office Mix. Um, you might be using um, video recording software and even maybe Skype calls. Um, so being able to reach out to other countries and, and practice some of these skills um, with, with people who speak the same language or, as you've said, um, making a, a weather diary for some of the younger students. It's really great to see um, that OneNote can be used that way um, and it's supporting um, your lessons as a tool and, and um, kind of being the hub of the ideas. So yeah, it's great. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I know that you have to get ready for school soon, so thank you for, for coming along and presenting um, to us. And we're going to welcome Maria next. Um, so Maria, feel free to to share your screen. Um, so Maria comes from Macedonia. Um, she put together uh, a sway where there was quite a few um, resources about, um, again, activities for investigation, and we're going to hear a little more about that. Um, how's your screen sharing there, Maria? Have you managed to turn that on? Well, I think I did. <laughs> that should be coming through shortly. It does. <laughs> does take a little while sometimes. Um, to those of the, you on the call who are you know, struggling a bit with the audio quality and the, um, the video quality too, um, there you go, your desktop's coming through now. Um, there will be a recording. Um, it is capturing quite nicely here from, from New Zealand and um, the audio is good too. So I know that there's so many different um, uh, elements when we're on a, a video call where the problem might be. So. Um, you'll be able to re review the, the video a bit later on. So we've seen your, your desktop there, Maria, so um, feel free to take it away and explain some of your great resources. Okay, I chose um, just nine, and there are 24. Um, 24 activities using OneNote in my Sway OneNote Love. And the first one I chose is called Round Up the Usual Suspects. It's actually an activity to practice past simple and past continuous since I'm an English language teacher. And this is how we do it. It's a practice for yes-no questions. And what we did was create a collaborative one-node detective notebook. Uh, we also uh, downloaded on only one phone the cam scanner. Can you hear me? Is the sound all right? Yep, yeah, we can hear you fine. Um, okay. Please continue. You'll we also down, uh, uh, downloaded a cam scanner uh, to scan our, uh, the signature of the students. And uh, Toka here Saloon, since the, the, the well, the, the witnesses were questioned and uh, they were going to testify about um, a criminal case and uh, the students were divided into detectives and um, police officers and, witness, uh, and witnesses and the students were practicing uh, yes no questions first they bran brainstormed what they were they were going to ask and answer and they, we have a recording of the audio recording of the interrogation um, then we created an image of uh, the person who robbed the bank or the store and we used Toka here saloon to make it more fun so this is my student Clementina. 
<laughs> after her hairdo. And this is her audio recording. Uh, the suspects, so they wore a wig and accessories, and they would, so they wouldn't be recognized. That's why we used uh, Toga Hair Saloon. And, um, well, it was a fun way to practice grammar. And this is another student of mine, Boyan Alexiski. Uh, uh, here is his investigation, audio investigation, and his signature. Uh, this was my first time to use OneNote, and I was amazed at what we could do, like leave audio and video notes and signatures and attach images and link everything. Um, it was amazing. The next activity is called Alibi Game. It's also an activity to practice past simple and past continuous, but WH questions. We had detectives and we had thieves, since we caught them now. And the thieves had to think of an alibi. And, um, well, actually, they were suspects. They had to think of an alibi. Uh, the alibi was an audio recording again, but then they had to answer a question where they were at the time of the crime. And we used OneNote Clipper. I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with OneNote Clipper, but OneNote Clipper is a very, very nice tool that you can use to clip uh, almost anything from a website. So we used OneNote Clipper to clip Bing Maps and to mark the place where the suspects were at the time of the crime, and also attach an image of who can testify. You see that we have a witness protection program, so you can't see the face of the person who can testify. And this is also a, a game that we did to practice past simple and past continuous. It's, uh, well, if you see this, this one note notebook, you'll only see images uh, saying confidential and nothing else. But what we did was use Orasma. I don't, I don't know if everyone is, um, if everyone has tried Orasma or any other um, tool to create augmented reality. So what you do, do with Orasma and other tools that you can use for augmented reality is scan the image and then you can overlay it with a video, audio or text, anything you like, or another image. What we did was uh, we overlaid these confidential files with videos of a testimony of a criminal case that happened. Uh, the fun thing that we also did was we found a nice app that scans our thumbs and tells us what we are wanted for according to CIA files. So this was something fun that we did. Um, along the way, uh, discovering what I could do with OneNote, I discovered that I can uh, copy and paste my uh, PowerPoint clip art, our handmade PowerPoint clip art. So what we did was instead of using um, Tinglink, we used Tinglink before. Instead of using Tinglink to link um, our infographics, that's, that's what we call them, to link our infographics to audio or video, we put them in OneNote and added audios. So this is a compar uh, compar compar comparing two objects with not as as, and Red Riding Hood is comparing noses and mouths and ears, and says, well, my grandmother's nose is not as big as yours. So if you hear the audio, you'll see that uh, it's my students saying these things, and we have all that in one note. This is another thing that we did, uh, com uh, comparing with smaller and smaller, and uh, using uh, font that is getting smaller and smaller to get the meaning of the word smaller and smaller. Um, this is a fun game with it. 
it's this notebook is called a holy patty, and I think there are uh, four, at least four activities with pirates in my Sway One Note Love. This is just one. Uh, this is how we used pirate English to learn the verb to be. So we used I instead of I, I am. Uh, the lassie, which means the girl, are, as, as in are. And we also copy-paste our handmade clip art uh, from our point, uh, PowerPoint presentation to the OneNote notebook, which was uh, a revelation for me. <laughs> um, I also learned that I could put whole slides inside my OneNote notebooks. Uh, this is our infographic for uh, comparative and superlative forms. and well, I learned that I could put them inside OneNote notebook and not bother using uh, Photoshop to assemble them in a long image or use tingling to link objects to voice or any other website. You can do that in OneNote. Uh, this is our Middle Earth. <laughs> Middle Earth. Um, notebook. The game is called uh, Habits of a Hobbit. It's a game that we use for um, practicing present simple towns. And the students are supposed to brainstorm what are the activities they do daily. And then imagine they are a hobbit uh, for a day and write about their habits as a hobbit. We also found a very nice application that you can turn yourself into a hobbit, and this is our German teacher, as you can see. And picture dictionary. Of course, the OneNote can be a picture dictionary. This is our picture dictionary for um, the lesson, the first Thanksgiving. These are the keywords that we needed for the lesson. Mayflower, plant, look for, fish, hunt, autumn feast, and pilgrim, Indian, of course. And the last one is, this is what we did uh, this Christmas. We made lists. Uh, Santa, we made Santa's nice list and Santa's naughty list. So we had um, a section for each item they did, like tidy my room, do my homework, uh, go to bed early, help my mom, be nice to my sibling. And we had lists of names of students that did well, uh, according to, for example, here are four students who tidied their room. We also used Excel online to create a poll to see if they're really for the nice or the naughty list. And of course, we gave them um, nice list certificates for being, for their good behavior. Thank you, Devil's Maria, that was an amazing collection of resources. Um, I think uh, just looking at the instant message chatter, um, <laughs> we're all thinking, "Wow, what is that tool? What is that? I want to hear about it." Um, look, one that point that um, I think a lot of people are asking about was that augmented reality. Um, uh, can you just tell me uh, what, what is that? Is it Orasma? Can you? Um, perhaps you could paste in the the link to to where that is, because um, I think. Being able oh, to yes, take, I will. Yeah, a picture of something and overlay it with something else. That sounds like a lot of fun to be able to to um I, for lots uh, of things. I think I think in my Sway One Note Love I also have a video that you can see what augmented reality is. Right. Actually. Okay, let me just grab that link to your sway and we'll drop Here it in my notes. Asthma, yes. And there is another one that I use now. Mm-hmm. I just have to check my phone. What was the name? Uh, no problem. Yeah, I mean, you had such a great collection of um, activities that um, 
where I, I guess they're about practicing the um, English language in different ways and being able to record what what people are saying um, so that you could I guess you could mark it so it's a great use of of the media features in, in OneNote um, and yeah as you found you can just paste in um, all sorts of things into OneNote um, you know your whole PowerPoints or clip art and and yes. really just use it as something like a scrapbook in some ways hey and link everything, just text and every uh, every picture you, every image you add, every form you add, you can link it to anything you want. That was the biggest thing I discovered. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, <clears throat> it's certainly the the linking within OneNote is a very powerful feature, and you know while we all want to be able to see um, a feature of embedding. Um, more within OneNote, like a um, Khan Academy lesson or something like that, we certainly still have the ability to, to link off to resources and use OneNote as our, our central place to guide students to the activities. Um, yeah, there's so much more that we can we can ask you about what you've created and Tamara, but we will keep the meeting moving along and, and shift over to Kurt. So thank you very much, Maria, for sharing what you did. Um, Kurt, if you're um, ready to share your screen, feel free to take over from there. So Kurt, um, he'll introduce himself, but just while that's loading up, um, he's a math teacher, and I'm sure that he really enjoys the inking features of OneNote, because when we're using OneNote as a math teacher, sometimes the keyboard just doesn't cut it. It, it doesn't quite have what we need. So we can see your desktop there now, um, Kurt, and I'll hand it over to you. So hi everybody. Yeah, definitely I'm into the stylus. So in Austria I'm called Mr. Stylus because I, I always looking for tablets with stylus and that's my my most important thing. But you can see hopefully my class, my class of 2016. So um, make an educated educated guess where I am. <laughs> but I want to show you something what I do with my class and with my classes. I have one more uh, than one class. I'm a math teacher at the business school in Hagsteyer and I've experienced a lot of cool things with OneNote since this year I'm using the OneNote uh, class notebook creator and you can see up there there's a section called teacher and uh, collaboration and this is the, the other the student sections. So everybody who doesn't know about the OneNote class notebook, that's really really powerful. It's set up in five minutes, and every student has his own uh, working space. So let me show you what I do with my working space, at my teacher working space. For example, I put in a lot of things, a lot of links to videos. You see probably the links to some great YouTube resources, for example, here on, on trigonometry. Although it's in German, I think the, the math can be guessed what it's about. And I use this to introduce some topics and because I, I switched a lot, I flipped my classroom and therefore the students get a lot of um, input by YouTube videos. They are not made by me, these YouTube videos. Uh, most of the videos are uh, taken from some fellow friends. But I put them in and for homework I give them I give them the homework to, to watch these YouTube videos and come up with questions we can discuss in uh, our lessons. So I put in all the, the examples we are uh, working on. So this is, was just a collection of examples I took out from a book and I put it in by screen clipping. So that's very, very powerful for me. And I do not use the screen clipping tool. I do use the flicks of the stylus just to be uh, maybe a small explanation who isn't for, uh, for those who are not familiar with the stylus. I can flick with uh, my stylus just in these directions, and I put here uh, the, the screen clipping tool for this down uh, gesture, and for this up gesture, I put in the the, copy, uh, the paste gesture. So everything is just very smooth, and I don't uh, need a, um, 
a keyboard or a mouse, I can all make it with my uh, stylus. If you want to see more, I've um, produced a, a YouTube video on, on, these gest on how to use these gestures, so maybe I, I'll put in the link afterwards. But coming back to my OneNote books. So you can see that's a typical um, um, lesson plan of, or what's, um, what we have developed uh, uh, while I was holding the lesson, so that was the problem. We had to do some calculations on triangles, and that's where the stylus comes in with this great powers, because I, as a math teacher, I'm used to get a lot of different uh, um, Oh, come on, uh, uh, different signs, so that's, that's, that would be very hard to, to insert this kind of um, ancient Greek letter with a keyboard. And I put in, maybe you see this uh, beautiful um, sketches, these are screenshots from GeoGebra, my second favorite app I'm using since 10 years now, and the same here, I draw uh, the sketches in GeoGebra and put in a screen uh, clip from this. So that's how the, all the things are collected together in one place and the students can access this and they can see what we have done. There is the, the, the idea behind it is that the students can re-read this, they can re-watch this, often I take advantage of the um, audio feature, so I put in an audio file, and that's great use for me as a math teacher because I can uh, take my explanations and put it right onto the, the OneNote page, so if there's a question at home, they can just click on this audio and they can re-hear what we've done in school. That's really powerful, I think. And one last example, that was uh, an example we did some measuring of our school building just to get the idea of what can be done with OneNote. And I'm showing this to you because I've actually made these photos, these pictures, and this one at the bottom with uh, my smartphone. And that's a real great powerful tool to use because you can, I opened uh, the, the exactly same, the same um, notebook on my smartphone and put in some photos where we were measuring and um, just getting the idea of how long is our school building. And then we get, uh, went back to uh, the classroom and then we did the whole calculation. So that's just one small example and I think that's, there you can see how powerful one it is because it's cross-device, so it's, it's really, really powerful to work with. Also, you can see I've embedded here the GeoGebra files, so that's another thing I love with OneNote. I just have to click on it and I can open it so everything is stored in one place and that's changed my teaching style completely. I'm teaching with OneNote now since five years, so since five, five years, uh, everything is on uh, in OneNote, and that's very powerful for me to, to see what I've done the last years, to take some really good examples from the last year's lessons and put it in into this year's lessons. So maybe I should show you something more. What I really love about OneNote is get some screen clipping, so that's just some financial mathematics, you see, and what I want to show you here is that I embedded some Excel files, so that's really, really powerful to get Excel files into this too, and uh, to get some uh, other apps or programs to work with. There are a lot of other notebooks, as you see in my OneNote uh, sections in my OneNote program. So right now I'm starting to do a bit more interactive for the students. I've 
uh, developed some kind of um, workbook for my students because I teach uh, at it's called it's at the evening school. I translated with evening school too, and there is some uh, time the students have to be in school and they have to do a lot of work, maybe 40 to 50 percent at home. So that's where OneNote comes in with this powerful online environment. So I just developed some um, workbooks and I in some explanations. You can see here a video file and I also added these great icons I got uh, for, uh, from another fellow ex expert educator. And so the students can see, oh, here is something they should watch and it's just a double click and they can open the video. Uh, to go on, there are a lot of um, worksheets in there and I've created these worksheets to make it a bit of fun with my so-called Fred. <laughs> I really love this guy. It's it's kind of funny math teacher in my opinion. And there I, I created some space. You see here the yellow spaces with the stylus on it. And there, this should be the place where the students put in their explanations, their answers to this kind of uh, worksheets. So let me show you what I've done again here is some ex uh, examples, some explanation for regression problems. As you see, I do use a lot of the stylus and so on. Here is some uh, screenshot I took from uh, from GeoGebra again. So that's my uh, aim to get a lot of different media into OneNote and Probably the, one of the most thing I use is embedding files because I have to hand out a lot of uh, paper. But as um, Cohen wrote on his today's blog, I try to get uh, paperless in my classrooms. And that's really, really powerful. I don't have to search for um, some worksheets. It's just all embedded here. It's all print out here from every uh, from every program I can imagine, I can put it right into OneNote and so we can work on these worksheets that were basically uh, in as a PDF. So that's now my work. I could show you a lot of other things I will have done. So maybe I get some OneNote demo through. My These are my examples I put oh, uh, I show all the time so you could see that my work is all based on stylus screenshots and worksheets embedded worksheets video files and maybe I should show you something really funny with it we did a uh, something with with beer to model it and there was a, a, a f, um, we put in a beer in, into a glass and we modeled the beer foam, how it's uh, coming down in time. And the last thing, and then I am stopping this, um, the students also put in their files. So let me show you some examples of this. This is an example of a student's work. And what I really love about that most is that they can put in their audio file. And in, in mathematics, it's for me, it's very important. They explain things. They can not only calculate things. They, in this example, uh, he had to explain what he has done. And that is very powerful. And for me, it is very easy to see what, uh, to hear what they have been thinking on their problem. On the other hand, I do this the same with uh, giving feedback. And maybe you're coming back to an actual notebook so you could see that my students are doing great work. Uh, let me see, I will choose Marie. Uh, you probably see that this is her um, trigonometry problem. She did quite the same 
at home to get uh, the size of her uh, hut at home. And they put in a lot, uh, some photos of handwritten things because my students do not have uh, pen-enabled devices. So they just put it on uh, paper and uh, they do it with paper and pencil and put in a, a screenshot or a photo pic of it. This was done in Excel. You, as I said, the embedded Excel file and I can uh, mark it and correct it. So that was really easy for me. Again, something in Excel. And here they've done, they've given uh, they've given me some uh, screenshots from uh, GeoGebra, and this is something we did just this week. They had to uh, model a real uh, life problem with GeoGebra. So I, as you see, I can show you a lot of lot of more things, and I'm very very happy uh, if you have any questions. So feel free to ask in the chat window or afterwards. And I hope you have seen a lot of interesting things. So back to Daryl. Thanks. Kurt, again, that, that is amazing. It's good to see um, uh, your use of the stylus. Um, you know, it's very important for, for mathematics. And uh, let me just share my screen while we're waiting there too. Um, it, yeah, because as you've said, you know, there are some characters that you just can't get to to um, type on the keyboard. Um, I see that there are some people that are really interested in that flex gestures um, for copying and pasting and screenshots. So if you can, just uh, uh, find that link to your YouTube video that explains yep. that because that would be great. Um, and there was a couple of other things there too. I like the use of um, embedding the Excel files so that... Um, of course, there's a lot of math that can be done within Excel, so um, it's making good use of that feature. Um, and yeah, uh, that you've been doing this for five years, that you can draw from um, existing resources that you created from five years ago. You're making use of that, and then you're also making use of printing something into OneNote in a, in a PDF form, so that you're not just restricted or, or the burden isn't on you to come up with all the resources. You can make use of something that was created in, a, in another format and just print it into OneNote. Um, I, I also like the, the thought about using um, audio while students are trying to explain their workings. Um, and not only is it adding another dimension to their work, but it's also helping to lower the barrier for some students that might find it difficult to express um, things in writing that they can just they can just talk you through it and um, and certainly you'll be able to get a, a bigger and better picture of how they came to the the answers that they did um, that's just excellent um, you know, I know that you're probably just digging out the link to that video um, but look um, everyone I just want to reiterate too if I just go back to our home page here that I've got in our shared notebook Thank you for everyone who was um, adding notes to the to the notebook there too. We'll publish that later. Um, just to to um, highlight again that um, if you do want to keep asking questions of Kurt, Maria, and Tamara, um, that you can just join us in the yammer.com/watercooler. So I will just bring that over on to our screen. Um, where are we? Just so that we can see where we can um, join in and um, continue to ask questions. So this, um, if you haven't used Yammer before, um, just go to yammer.com and you can pop in your email address that you use at your school or, or if you want, your personal email address. You can join Yammer and then you can go to OneNote Water Cooler. So I will just copy that link again and drop that into here. Um, yeah, one note water cool. Let's just change the color of that because that's a little bit hard to to read. Uh, we'll go black. The one note water cooler, and um, you'll be able to join us in there. And um, let's just simulate this. I might want to ask a question of Kurt um, at Kurt. Um, great presentation. Please share the link to your video about gestures 
and um, we'll post that there and Kurt will be able to respond and so just giving you an example there if you want to keep asking questions there's plenty of great information in, in that community there too um, so just a quick plug there too for our next session and it hasn't been finalized yet but um, up next we're looking to get um, Ian Stewart on on the show on, on the um, the meeting next time Ian's um, uh, from Scotland. He works with um, the Scottish government there in an organisation called GlowScot. Um, they are using Office 365 to um, quite extensively um, for, for classrooms and very much looking at using OneNote within uh, the curriculum. Um, Ian's been organising hack days where um, teachers can gather together in, in a day and um, begin to put resources together all in, a, in one worksheet or one notebook. Um, and the, the end goal, um, as I understand it, is to be able to come out with a, a workbook that has been created by a number of teachers and it can be shared um, around in, um, within the, the Glow Scott or within Scotland to, to use. So uh, hopefully we can get Ian on the on um, the next meeting to explain us um, a lot more about how that's achieved and, and give us some tips around that. Um, just finally too, if you uh, do follow uh, OneNote C at OneNote C um, on Twitter, then you'll be able to keep up with the lots of these sorts of announcements um, and things around the OneNote community and OneNote water cooler. So um, thank you uh, to Tamara, to um, Maria and Kurt for, for being with us today. We did go longer than expected, but that's because it was such a great show. Um, lots of enthusiasm, and I hope this has been really helpful to everyone. I will um, publish the recording um, and a copy of these notes up on my blog post, and I'll share that um, within the community and also um, out on Twitter, and, and perhaps um, um, Marilyn can um, share it also through OneNote C on Twitter too. So thanks again. I'll, I'll stick around for questions, but that's... Um, that's basically the, the end of the presentation. Thank you all for attending. Thanks. Bye to all.